Hey everyone, how's it going? It's James here from Soundline Audio. Welcome back to the Soundline. So today what we are doing, what we have here is a really cool deck by Audio Research. This is the Audio Research Deck 9, the most recent version. I think it's the V3. Um, all I'm going to be doing for you guys today is just unboxing it, taking it apart, putting the tubes in, assembling it, and getting it ready uh, to be put on the sh shelf and sold. But I thought, you know, it's quite cool. Get to see the insides of an Audio Research piece of equipment. So I thought I might film it, bring you guys along for the ride. Let's do it. One... White box inside the brown box. Okay. Caution, do not drop. Fragile. I think this is the lid here. There we go. Okay. So, we have here extra covers for screws, our deck 9 manual and warranty information, IEC 20 amp power cable or 19 amp power cable and it looks like they come with some of these these are snap-on ferrite cores so you can uh, if you look there you can see how they're kind of those half circle things so these snap on over top of the power cable that they supply with you and you know you can use those to reduce noise and things like that it looks like they come with one two three of them yeah so if we want we can put all of those on most of our audio research gear we tend to uh, use third party power cables with, but if you're going to use the original one or the factory one, it's nice to know that it comes with some noise reduction. Audio Research remote with two AAA batteries, a dedicated uh, screwdriver from Audio Research. They send you these to make sure that you are using the right uh, screwdriver head with their screws that you have to take off the top of them because, you know, there are a lot of cheap and nasty screwdrivers out there which are going to ruin the heads of the screws. So they think, you know what, we'll just include a screwdriver, make sure they're using the right one. So yeah, they come, they come with that. And this box here, which I've already opened, this is what contains our two valves. And they do have serial number on there and it says what product it is for. Serial number 51011 for the deck 9. So open this up, and there we have our two tubes. I'll get them out in a second once I've gotten the main unit out. So we'll put those down to the side for now because we're going to need them. Now, this whole piece lifts out to reveal the big yellow warning label. Do not attempt to install or remove any vacuum tubes from uh, unless this unit has been turned off and disconnected from the AC power outlet. Basically, don't hot swap these valves and just pull things in and out when you've got it plugged into the power. That's pretty good common sense, I would say. Now, this piece of foam comes off. Then we're able to get the actual deck out of the box. And these decks are pretty lightweight, fortunately. I'm just gonna move this box out of the way now. Okay, so now we can take the plastic off of the deck, which looks like it is stuck, un stuck down underneath. So if we just carefully flip this up and over, like that. This piece of sellotape here lifts up. I'm just gonna. And then this here looks like it all opens up this way. Fold that back on itself like that. Now, if we just very carefully again lift it up this way and pull the plastic down around it. preserve this plastic. So now, with our dedicated audio research screwdriver, we can start taking these screws out. Now, how many are there? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve screws. Got to get the two on the sides as well, the four on the sides. And I'll just quickly get all these out. Now, now that you've got all the screws out, this whole shell just lifts up and off. When you do it, kind of grab from the sides and very gently bend it out this way. It is quite thin, so it's quite easy easy to, um, to manipulate. But just as you go up, 
don't catch on anything. So you can see, just by me, I don't know if you can see, but that's, it's quite easy to manipulate. But you just want to be careful when you're going up to make sure you don't catch on these power transformer wires, or obviously touch any of these capacitors, or these little wires sticking out the side here. Set our case down in the orientation that it came off in. Now, so you'll see here, these two spots here, let me just zoom in, these two spots here are our valve, or our tube locations. And the tubes do have to be installed in a specific way, so we can, we can get our tubes out now, out of this box, take the little lid off. When you get them out of this box, do just be careful that, the, that you try not to move the rubber rings down in any way, because uh, the positioning of these rubber rings is, a, is actually very important, and it does come into how the product ultimately sounds. So when you're getting them out, you just kind of part the foam as best you can with your fingers. Get your fingers down around past, kind of around down to the bottom of the rubber ring and gently slide it up out. You'll see here, there are two rubber rings and that's how I was gripping it. And that's how you want them to stay. Now this says on it, you read on the valve, see how this one says, if it would focus, it actually says V1 12.3. So now we know V1 has to go here because right above here, that actually says V1 and V2. And now we just gotta line these up. These pins don't go all the way around. There is a part where there is like, it looks like there's a pin missing. That's what lines up with the break in the holes there. So you just very carefully line them up. And then once they're all lined up, just gently apply force until it works itself down, all the way down in, like that. Okay, that's one. Gently work that out of there. V2, this also says 12.3. So when Audio Research are selecting their tubes for their uh, equipment, they have a whole bunch of batches of tubes that come out with different ratings, 12.3, 12.4, 12.45, and they try and always give you equipment with incredibly well balanced tubes, even like exactly balanced if they can. So you almost always have two tubes that say 12.3 or, or something um, similar to one another. In cases where you have power amplifiers, where there are multiple different um, tubes in them, sometimes, or four tubes, you'll get just one, which is just a little bit out, and they do label them and tell you where to put them. So just get it lined up and apply force and it will eventually just slide in. You do have to apply a fair decent amount of force which is why you want to make sure you're nice and square with it otherwise you could risk bending one of the pins. Okay that's all sorted. This particular piece of equipment doesn't have any bits of plastic or anything else on the board anywhere which are installed during shipping. Some some pieces have uh, little bits of plastic installed in there for shipping to prevent things from moving around, like capacitors. But this one doesn't look like it has any, so we're okay there. Now we can put our lid back on. And remember, you just want to... Probably the best position to do this would be from the front here. And just really carefully... Lower it down with it slightly bent out. and it should all line up, just like that. Cool, now we can put our screws back in. Okay, there we go. Put our foam back in our valve box and keep that all together with the original packaging. Okay, so we've got up on our test rack up here. What we've got here is our Antipodes EX silver model. This has got a hard drive in the back of it with a whole lot of music on it. It also works with Tidal streaming service. And we're going to be transmitting audio from here to the deck via USB. So I've got my power cable, a couple of balanced audio cables running down to an AccuPhase integrated amp underneath here with our speakers hooked up. And we're gonna plug it, I'm just gonna plug this up real quick, get it powered on and we'll see if we can get some sound out of it. So let's do our USB first. So like that. Audio output, right, left, power, ok 
Okay. The other thing these come with is this nice great big film on the front of them which we are going to preserve so I'm just going to quickly peel this off. I'm just going to put it back in the original packaging where it can stay nice and sticky and not get lost. A good place to stick this if you're wanting to keep it for later is on that plastic bag that the DAC was in. So just take that out of there and then stick it on that plastic bag. Preserves it pretty well. Alright, time to power it up. Now the mute is going to flash for a wee while and this does this every single time you power an audio research up. It goes through a checking cycle where it basically waits for the you know tubes to reach some level of temperature or, or state of readiness. So it, I think it's around about a 30 second time. We'll just wait and see. Okay and it's finished. Now when it's finished doing its power up it will just stay on mute mode. So now we can turn off mute and we can also turn on our integrated amplifier and set it to balanced input. There we go, volume down. Okay now let's get some music playing and see if we can get something out of it. Okay that's playing. So now let's see if we have some sound. So it's telling us that it's now playing music from the USB source, 44.1 kilohertz, sample rate fast. So we can, we can cycle through our inputs. We have AES, RCA input, BNC, TOSLINK, and USB. So I just thought I'd run through the menu items for you guys real quick. So if we push menu, we get up sample off, filter, fast, and then you can use the option button to go through the options so we can change that to hit enter again to change it to slow but we're not going to we're just going to leave it as it is push it menu again we get invert on or off display brightness we can go we can cycle through minimum all the way to maximum i think that there looks pretty good select naming select input usb so if we want to change the name of this usb input well actually first we want to do is Press option until it changes to the source we're on. So for this one, USB, and then we hit enter. And then we can push option, and it cycles through the preset names in here. So we've got USB cable, CD, CDR, computer, DAC, digital, digital 1, 2, DVR, FM, game, Mac, PC, phono, radio, ref, phono, SACD, satellite, sat, sat and satellite server that's probably the closest thing to what we've got there so we're going to leave that on server and then if i hit enter again it is now named that source server and then we can just push menu again auto shut down it will turn itself off after a certain amount of time so we've got two hours three hours four hours five all the way to eight or off where it doesn't do it so we'll leave it at its standard which is two hours tube hours this is how you find out how many hours your tubes have done at the moment it's currently on zero because it has done less than one hour of uh, time. Whoops. And then if you put, install new tubes, that is where you reset the counter as well. So we'll just go through it again. Tube hours, ups, and then back to up sample off. So that's everything in the menu option, in the menu structure. And that's pretty much the gist of everything that's in this. Well guys, that has been this video. I hope you found it enjoyable or at the very least educational. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make something quick and easy and show you what the inside of one of these Audio Research DAC 9s looks like. Uh, if you want to have a listen to it, come on down to, to Soundline Audio, Christchurch, 329 Madras Street, give us a call, let us know what you want to do and we'll make it happen. So thanks for watching this video, let the music play and I'll catch you on my next one. Kakadiano.